RMO is a rare auto-inflammatory bone disease, and there's not a lot of research studies that are out there, and we need more of them. But um, in order to effectively do these research studies, you need to have a homogeneous cohort population, um, and that allows for earlier um, uh, patient participation in these studies and um, identification of these patients, and also um, helps with comparison of the groups across studies as well, too. And so uh, a group of us, an international group of us, have um, uh, come together to try to develop classification criteria for CRMO. And so far, um, what we've been able to do is we've identified identified through a survey that we sent out to uh, this group of um, pediatric rheumatologists and adult rheumatologists as well, um, asking them to identify candidate criteria items or just really any items that they felt were relevant to a diagnosis of CRMO. Um, and so we got back that survey. We had about 260 participants in that survey. And um, from there, a group of us looked at all the answers and we've narrowed that down to about 33 candidate items for this classification criteria. And um, from there, um, then we have to now uh, narrow that down much further than 33. And um, we're still in the process of doing that, but um, we've uh, held meetings, consensus meetings, um, uh, redefining and eliminating some of the criteria that have come up, um, and then sent out more surveys about how to reduce these items down further. Um, and uh, so far, we've been able to come down to 31 items, um, so we still need some more work to do with that. Um, and there's still steps after that as well, too, um, to get that down to that final core set um, that we can use as our classification criteria for the disease. Once we develop that set core set of uh, classification criteria, um, we want to test it. And so um, we are in the process of collecting CRMO cases and also uh, mimicking diseases, things like infectious osteomyelitis and malignancies, bone malignancies. Um, and we will run that criteria set on the cases and on the controls and see how well it does and how well we can um, determine or distinguish between the two um, uh, diseases. Um, and uh, right, it's a lot of validation on um, these cases and these controls as well too. Yeah. So we submitted a proposal to the ACR and ULAR for this project to develop this classification set. Um, and that's important to get their recognition of this classification set as well too. Um, they have very strict um, steps and uh, guidelines to follow as well, and that also helps us like go through the proper steps of developing this classification criteria. So um, we uh, just submitted that last month, and so far we've been invited to submit a full proposal now, so which that'll be due in August, and um, hopefully we'll get their um, support for this project as well too. We'd like to do it as soon as we can, but still go through the proper steps. Um, we are uh, only at the moment just still collecting cases, and um, we would like to collect more cases and more um, uh, mimicker diseases or control cases as well. Um, but I could this, could this project probably still go on for a couple more years before we really get everything that we need and uh, go through all the validation steps as well. If they're interested, and we definitely would like to have more collaborators, and we are making this international, so um, uh, the more the merrier. They can contact me, or the principal investigator on the project is um, Yang Dong Zhao, or Dan Zhao, at Seattle Children's. And um, uh, we'd be more than happy to um, share how to get involved with our project.